Hi. Today we'll be talking about Posets, which is Stanley's chapter three. Um, the first few sections are pretty heavy in definitions and just examples to get familiar with the topic. And then as we get into hopefully second lecture, maybe third lecture, uh, we'll do some really uh, fun and interesting stuff uh, involving the incidence algebra. Okay, but let's start with posets. First definition. A poset is a set P <coughs> and the letter P is often used to den denote the poset itself even though there's an underlying set as well as an additional relation with a relation s less than or equal to t for s and t in p such that First off, uh, we need to have for any t in p, t is less than or equal to t. Okay, that's called the reflexive property. Uh, if you have s and t such that s is less than or equal to t and t is less than or equal to s, that means that s equals t. They're the same element of the set. That's anti-symmetry. And the third property that this needs to have is that if you have s less than or equal to t and t less than or equal to u, I'm sure you can guess, that implies s is less than or equal to u, and that's the transitive property. Okay. Uh, not every pair of elements has to be related by this uh, inequality relation. Um, we say that s and t are comparable if one of the following is true, s is less than or equal to t, or t is less than or equal to s. Otherwise, we say they are incomparable. Okay, now let's go through a few examples of, uh, of post sets. Um, so, simplest example is if you take some positive number and then take this set one through that number. So one, two, up to n. We call this the little curly bold n. This is the post set whose underlying set is n with the usual inequality with usual, okay? So one is less than or equal to two, which is less than or equal to three, etc. Okay, that's pretty simple. Okay, another one is uh, Bn. So this is the, this is defined as the post set, which takes the power set of n And then it gives inequality as s is less than or equal to t 
if S is a subset of T. Okay. So obviously, if you could have two sets that aren't contained one in the other, and then those elements would be incomparable in the post set. Dn is defined as the set of positive divisors of n with r divides r less than or equal to s if r divides s. Um, so, for instance, if you have 12, then you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12 as the elements of the post set, because those are all the positive divisors. Um, and you would have 2 and 3 are incomparable, but 2 is less than or equal to 4. 4 and 6 are incomparable. Um, 4 is less than or equal to 12, and 6 is less than or equal to 12. Okay. One last post set to think about that's more connected to some of the combinatorics that we did this semester is pi n, and this is defined as the set of partitions, set partitions, not like integer partitions, like set partitions. So if you have the set one, two, three, four, then you would put you know one and three in one block and two and four in another block. That's the kind of partition we're talking about. Partitions of the set n. And the relation, the inequality, will be given by lam lambda is less than or equal to mu if every block of lambda, let's call it lambda i, is contained in some block of mu. And we'll see some examples of all of, of even more explicit examples of those. Okay, let's talk about some more poset properties. An isomorphism of posets and let's call it phi mapping a poset P to a poset Q is a map satisfying S less than or equal to T if and only if phi of s is less than or equal to phi of t. Okay, so the set of relations of p is equivalent to the set of relations of q. Okay, and uh, also this is a bijection. The bijection of the underlying sets. Such that, okay. Um, you could have weaker relationships of posets. A weak subposet P contained in Q means that P is inside of Q as a set and 
if you have a relationship s less than or equal to t in p that implies that the same relationship exists uh, in q sorry this is this phi notation is not really relevant in this example this implies that um, s is less than or equal to t in q If the underlying sets are equal, and you have kind of the, the relationships of P are a subset of the relations of Q, then that's called a, then Q is a refinement of P. So if the sets are equal, but relations are not, then Q is a refinement of P. And the reason it's called a refinement is because you have more relationships, right? It's got all of the relationships you had in P and some more stuff as well. Okay, an induced sub poset this is defined as a sub poset where you have so a proper subset of the or not necessarily a proper subset I guess it could be equal uh, but there there's an inclusion as sets and For any S and T that are actually in the subpost set, the, rela the relations are identical. S is less than or equal to T in P if and only if S is less than or equal to T in Q. Okay? So it's just kind of. Uh, throwing away some of the elements of the poset, but keeping all of the relations intact, all of the relations among what remains. An open interval Oh, sorry. Let's start with just an interval. S and T in a poset this is equal to the set of u in p such that s is less than or equal to u is less than or equal to t um, but it's not just the, the that set it's the induced post set in the, the induced sub post set on this set induced sub post set on this. Okay. An open interval okay so that has what we're accustomed to the parentheses. This is equal to uh, the induced subpost set on the set u in p such that s is less than u is less than t. Okay, so it just means that you don't include s and t basically. That's all that really matters there. Okay, a covering relation. And again, I'm sorry for just all of these definitions, but we just have to get through them. Covering relation. is uh, where you have s less than t, and I'm going to include this dot. This is defined as s is less than or equal to t, and s is not equal to t. So really just 
s is less than t, and there is no u such that s is less than u is less than t. Um, yeah, so just it's the thing directly above you, assuming there's, yeah. You won't, you won't necessarily always have something that covers a given element in a poset, but a, if something covers you, that means there's nothing between you and it. Okay. I probably don't need to say more on that. <laughs> If every interval in a poset is finite, and let's call the poset P, then we say P is locally finite. Okay, and if you want to think about an example of something that's a poset that's not finite but is locally finite, let's give a quick example of that. So if you just take all the positive integers ordered by the standard inequality, that is clearly a countably infinite poset. poset but it's locally finite because if you take any two elements, you have a, a finite chain in between them. Okay. Now let's talk about Hasse diagrams. A Hasse diagram of a finite poset P is a graph okay in the standard way we think of graph as vertices and edges with the vertices being given by the elements of the poset, um, the edges given by covering relations, and then it's not just a graph. You also need to position the elements of the. You need to have all the edges oriented vertically so that the larger element is above. Uh, so larger element is higher. Okay. So we had our uh, set of examples before of um, of different posets. So let's draw their Hasse diagrams. So we had the poset n. So what that looks like is just uh, you start with one. Okay, one is covered by two. Two is covered by three, etc., which is covered by n minus one, which is covered by n. So it looks like a vertical chain. Okay. Um, now let's look at a specific example of a Boolean poset, B3. So uh, for B3, remember for a Boolean poset, you have a covering relation if um, you're a subset 
if, if one set is a subset of another set and there's no sub there's no sets in between so let's let's draw this out so if we have we start with the empty set okay, that's the simplest okay and now we're looking at the the top element is going to be the set with three all three elements in it okay so in between we're going to have the six other subsets of one, two, three. So the things that cover the empty set are just the singletons. One, two, three, because there's no set in between the empty set and a singleton. Okay, now for, now for the remaining sets, we have, well, let's put one, two over here put one three over here and two three over here um, now in terms of what covers what we have one two covers one because you can only add two to get into that so there's nothing in between similarly one two covers two one three covers one one three covers three two three covers two and three and all of these are covered by one two three Okay, so you've got kind of a nice graph of a cube there. I think we've drawn this before. I also get D36. Okay, so remember D is the poset of divisors. So the set of divisors of 36, well, it's nine, it's, uh, nine times four, or six squared. So that's two squared times three squared. So if I start at one, because that's the smallest divisor and it's gonna divide, ev divide everything else. I could multiply by two or I could multiply by three. Those are the only things that will cover one because those are the only prime factors. And I could multiply by two again, get four. Or multiply by three again and get nine. Or I could multiply these two by each other and get six. Okay, so three and four should be incomparable, two and nine should be incomparable, um, and otherwise these should be the correct covering relations. Now we can multiply, we can take the greatest common, uh, or least common multiple here to get 12, and here to get 18, and then doing this will give us 36. So that should be the post set of divisors of 36. Now let's look at, in my notes I, I did this with four, but I'm a little nervous to draw it. Maybe we'll draw a partial graph of, P, of pi four, a partial Hasse diagram. So if we have, so that kind of the bottom uh, element of the post set of the post set for pi four is the thing where all of the blocks will be in some will be in the blocks of whatever other partition we choose, and that's just where each element is its own block. Okay. Now on the next rung of the ladder, we're going to combine two elements into one block. Okay, so depending on what we choose, that gives us the different, uh, the different options. So I'm just going to write those pairs. So we can put together one and two, we can put together one and three, one and four, two and three, two and four, or three and four. Okay, and all of these cover, cover one, two, three, four. I'm drawing it dotted so that paper doesn't get overwhelmed. <laughs> um, okay, now looking at the next example, we have, looking at the next layer, um, we're going to combine two more blocks. But now it, it's a little trickier because we can combine the two block with a one block or we can combine the two one blocks. So that gives us, let, let's start by, by listing all of the, the options if we combine the two block with a one block and then we'll list 
the options of combining the two the the one blocks. Okay, so we have one, two, three. This is again we're combining the two block with a one block. One, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. Okay, and now we're gonna combine the two one blocks. One, two, three, four. One, three, two, four. One, four, two, three. Okay. This post set is a little bit off balance, as you can tell. So let's draw all of the covering relations. One, two is inside of one, two, three. Uh, so that's good. It's also inside of one, two, four. And it's also inside of the block one, two in this partition over here. One, three is here. And it also goes here. And it also goes to the block over here. Okay. Um, this is why I said I would do it partially. <laughs> the, the, I'm going to write etc. over here. You can fill in those edges for yourself. Um, and the last partition up above here is one, two, three, four, where everything is in the same block. And obviously, all of those lead up here. Okay. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice based on the drawing that I just did is that um, even in small examples, the complexity can get pretty high for these things. Okay. Now let's do a question for sanity check. Um, sometimes even if you have the, the same post set, you can still find yourself with uh, seemingly different Hasse diagrams. So here's a question. Which of the following the same. Okay, now I have to draw the diagrams. So these are all post sets on four elements, um, and you can make various uh, you can make various observations to tell that things are different. For instance, uh, not all of these graphs have the same number of covering relations, and that's something that wouldn't change just by drawing the diagram differently. Um, but you might have to just think about kind of moving the shape around and, and thinking about what it would look like. Uh, if you do that, you'll see that this diagram and this diagram represent the same poset. Okay, let's see, make some more definitions. Ooh, bad news. chain is a poset where any two elements are comparable. Okay. 
So whenever you take an A and a B, you're either going to have A is greater than B or B is greater than A. Okay, uh, a maximal chain. Okay, so this is where you have some post at P. Um, C is an induced sub poset of P. And it's a chain. And it's not contained in any larger chain. It's pretty much what you would expect from something called a, max, a maximal chain. Okay, uh, a chain is saturated. This is a slightly different concept. This is if you can, uh, if there's no element you can add in between two elements of a chain. So it's a, uh, again, C in P is induced sub poset n chain. And there is no U in P and covering relation s less than t in c such that s is less than u is less than t okay basically you it, it's saturated if you can't add stuff in between from the outside poset so you can see clearly that a maximal a maximal chain is saturated but not vice versa. Not vice versa. The reason being that you could ma you could take make a saturated chain bigger by adding on top of it or below it. Okay. Now let's talk about rank generating functions. Or first, we'll talk about uh, what we have to get there. <laughs> uh, so we say for a given chain, so given a chain C, the length of the chain, L of C, This is the, the size of C in terms of how many elements it has, minus one. You could also think about it as the number of covering relations or the number of edges in the Ahasa diagram. Okay, we call the length of a poset is equal to the, the longest chain, the length of the, or the length of the longest chain, exactly max L of C for C in P uh, chain. Okay. If every chain uh, I should say if every maximal chain in P has the same length, N, then we say that the, the poset is graded and it has rank N.
Okay. And what do we mean by having rank n? Well, we're going to be able to assign a rank function. So, rank function row from p to 0 through n. And you're going to be able to assign the minimal elements the value 0. And then whenever you have a covering relation, if s is covered by t, then row of t equals row of s plus 1. Okay. And then you're going to have uh, a unique way to assign the value of this ring function just based on, on uh, its relationship to the minimal elements. Okay, um, let's look at, so g given this rank function, we can define a rank generating function. So the rank generating function of a post set f of px is defined as uh, the, s the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, let's say, of pn x to the n, where pn is equal to the number of elements uh, of rank n in the post set. Number of s in p such that the rank of s equals n. Okay, now let's do uh, some quick examples of this. Let's say I draw this cartoon post set Um, yeah, given by this, then I would have, so let's say this is P, then I would have F P X equals two, because you have two minimal elements, plus two X, because there's two elements of the next rank, plus X squared. Okay. Um, for the general classes that we saw before, if we take um, the chain n, okay, so where that's the integers 1 through n, we would get the, um, the q analog, which I'm not sure we, we defined this before, but this is just 1 minus x to the n divided by 1 minus x, which is just 1 plus x plus up to x to the n minus 1. Yeah, and that's because it's the set 1 through n, so 1 gets the gets rank 0, so n gets rank n minus 1. That's why you have up to x to the n minus 1. Um, I, sh I should put a f of n x. Okay, how about for the Boolean post set? That's a familiar polynomial. It's just 1 plus x to the n. Because, right, because each, uh, the rank of a set, of a subset is just, is just its cardinality. Is cardinality so there are n choose k uh, 
subsets of rank K. Just to finish this off, if we have, uh, let's think of pi n. So the rank generating function for pi n, this is, now we have to think about what, what it means to be uh, of a certain rank here. So the rank of a partition pi, or let's, let's say lambda, is, well, if we start at the bottom with all of the blocks separate, and then each step up, we combine a block. So then the rank is, is related to the number of blocks that you have, but it's kind of inversely related. So starting, if you have n blocks, you have rank zero. If you have n minus one blocks, after you combine two, you have rank one. If you have n minus two blocks, you have rank two. So rank of lambda is n minus the number of blocks of lambda. Okay. Is that the, the terminology for number of blocks? Let's say n minus number of parts of lambda, just in case that's not the standard notation. And we have... Uh, so, so how many partitions, set partitions, of n with k parts, and that gives us the Stirling numbers of the second kind that we saw many weeks ago. So that will be sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of s n n minus i x to the i. Okay. These are the ways to partition the set n into n minus i parts. That's the Stirling number that we're looking for. Okay, just a couple more definitions and we will finish it off. An anti-chain is a poset, or in the case that it's a subposet, it's a subposet, such that no two elements are comparable. Okay, in this context, so the Hasse diagram looks something like this. Okay, it's just a collection of vertices. They're all at the same level because none is greater than one of the others. Okay, um, an order ideal. sometimes called a downset, is a subposet, let's say an order ideal or downset of P, is a subposet of P such that let's say suppose at i of p such that if um, if you have such that uh, for any s in p and t in i if s is less than or equal to t, then s is also an i. Okay, there's just it's closed downward, 
So if you have something in your ideal, everything below it is also in the ideal. Okay. And uh, an upset or a dual order ideal is the same thing but upside down. Okay. Um, next time around, we're going to see some powerful applications of order ideals in constructing new, uh, new posets. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll learn, we'll, we'll keep building up this toolkit of posets until we can do some really fun stuff with it. Uh, with the incidence algebra sections. Okay, thanks.